Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Notes from the Sewing Room, my name's Becky. Today's video is all about my finished Eden coat. My channel is all about sewing and my craft adventures, so if that's something that you're interested in, please do hit the subscribe button now to keep up to date with all of my latest content. Well, I hope you've had a lovely week, whatever you've been doing. Um, I must say, I absolutely can't believe it. I have finished my Eden coat. So if you are from, unfamiliar with what the Eden coat is, it's a Tilly in the Buttons pattern. And I think it's for what they describe as improvers. So people that have got a little bit of sewing experience already and wanted to move on to something that was a little bit more challenging. So I would say that um, if this was your first coat project, then it would be a fairly um, complicated one to go for. There are definitely more kind of straightforward coat patterns out there, so I would probably try those ones first. Having said that, this one is not really, really complicated, but there are just a few elements of the pattern that I found a little bit tricky, so I'll run through those as we go along. Just to say also, if anyone's interested in um, what I'm wearing today, because I know some of you sometimes like to know, um, I'm wearing one of my Grainline Linden tops today, so um, this was made, oh, absolutely ages ago, out of a few different scrap um, pieces of fabric that I had. So um, I think the pink was originally used for a dress project, um, likewise the arms, and then I've used some um, jersey ribbing for the cuffs and the neckband as well. Right, so onto the Eden coat. So uh, the Tilly and the Buttons Eden coat um, is not my first coat project that I've ever done. I have made a few coats previously. Um, however, it is my first duffel coat project that I've made. Um, now, this uh, coat project, um, or so should I say pattern, I think it was released sometime last year in 2019. Um, and when it was first released, it wasn't really something that really um, I thought I, I really wanted to make. But because um, I visited the um, Handmade Fair in Surrey uh, last year um, in the UK, and I visited the Tilly and the Buttons um, kind of stall that they had there. And um, it was really great because I got to meet Tilly as well, which was really exciting. She was really lovely. And she let me try on one of the samples that they had made up there of um, the Eden coat, which was made out of a lovely uh, kind of lilac-y wool fabric. So because I tried that on, even though it wasn't an exact fit on me, um, I could see that I, it was something that I really wanted to, to try and um, try and test myself with the different skills that it involved. So speaking of size, I looked at the, um, the body measurements on the pattern, as you do, and I also looked at the finished garment measurements as well. And uh, looking at the sizes that I fell into, um, I wanted to make sure that I'd got plenty of room underneath my coat to wear you know, a jumper or maybe a thick cardigan so I could wear it in uh, the cool weather um, here in the UK. It has been pretty chilly at the minute. Um, so um, I wanted to make sure that I'd got plenty of room. Because I don't know about you, but one thing that I hate is um, just finding that my uh, clothes are too tight, sometimes particularly when you're driving and stuff. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I'd got plenty of room to, to move around and turn around as, as needed. So I decided to go for um, a size four in the Tilly the Buttons patterns at the top and then um, braid out to a size five at the bottom. Another reason for me doing that is I decided to add a wadding into the main uh, bodice of my coat so that I could basically quilt my lining. So if that wasn't included in the original pattern instructions. Um, it's the first time that I've ever quilted a lining to a jacket, but I thought it would make it extra warm and toasty. And, um, but really because of that, I wanted to make sure that I got a little bit of extra room as well, um, because like I said, I didn't want it to be too tight. Um, I also added an interlining into my sleeves. So if I just hold that up there, um, you can see that I've used an anti-static lining on the inside of my jacket, which is a kind of beige colour. Um, and uh, on the inside of that, so basically the, the section you can't see in between the outside and the inside, um, I decided to add in an extra cotton fabric. So that, uh, again, allows the arms to be a little bit extra warm and uh, not allow the, uh, the breeze to blow through as much. Um, so that's really good. Um, so let's talk about fabric. So the wool fabric that I've used on the outside, I think it's a wool blend fabric. Um, I was gifted that from the fabric guys online. Um, I think I got sent about four meters of that. So I have actually got plenty left over. Um, this was a nice wide fabric though. So I have probably got a little bit left over to make 
you know, a little bit of something uh, small, maybe a, a smallish jacket or, um, I don't know, maybe a little skirt or something like that. I've not got loads left, but um, I have got a bit. Um, but if, if you were um, trying to be a little bit more careful about the amount of fabric you used, if it was nice and wide, you could probably get it out of three and a half metres. Um, but, you know, don't, don't go on what I say. Do check um, what it says on the pattern. I've not got the pattern to hand at the minute um, to hold up, but I will put some um, pictures on the screen um, either side of me so you can actually um, see uh, what the front of the pattern and um, any of the bits that I can find as well to show you that might be interesting. Um, so, yeah, speaking about the fabric, the inside of the fabric, or the inside of the coat, should I say, is actually made from a cotton sateen fabric. So it's an absolutely gorgeous cotton sateen. Um, cotton sateen is one of my favourite fabrics to sew with. It's really um, easy, it glides through the machine uh, beautifully, and it doesn't slip around. It's also got a lovely sheen to it on top, this one. Um, I, you might recognise this fabric, actually, because I've got about half a metre left from a, a, a dress project that I did um, last year. I bought it from Material Girl Laura, absolutely loved it. So uh, with the half metre that I had left, I managed to um, line the hood of my jacket here. Um, but I did order, order another uh, metre and a half so that I could make the whole body lining out of this beautiful fabric. I'm really, really pleased that I did that. I gave quite a lot of thoughts of what kind of fabric I was gonna use for uh, the bodice lining. And uh, to be honest, I did order a couple of different uh, things online, thinking, well, this is definitely going to work. And then when it arrived, I wasn't so keen. But I think this kind of animal print lining works really, really well um, with the wool on the outside. So what else did I use the animal print for? As you can see, I've got it in the hood there at the top. I will put some of the pictures on the screen so you can see me actually in the jacket as well. And I have um, also lined the inside of my pockets. With the, um, with the lovely animal print lining as well, which I'm really pleased with. So um, yeah, that's really great. In terms of the wadding, um, I used a, a, just a regular kind of lightweight quilting wadding that I bought from a local shop. Um, I think, you know, pretty much you could use, um, like I say, a kind of old bed sheet to, uh, to interline your project if you wanted to, or um, another kind of wadding, but I would definitely um, check the weight of it before you decide to just go ahead and sew it, just to make sure that it's not gonna be um, too thick and bulky when you're actually wearing the garment. Um, I decided to go for the version with the zip um, added. So in the pattern instructions, you can either add a zip or not add a zip. Now I would say that adding a zip to this project um, was really essential for me, just because I wanted to make sure that the wind wasn't gonna get um, inside my jacket when I was wearing it. And also I am a really kind of chilly, kind of cold person when I'm outside. So um, I just wanted to make sure that it was as warm as it could possibly be. So I'm really pleased that I added um, the zip. You could leave it out if you wanted to. Um, I would say that I found adding the zip to this project, bearing in mind that I have added zips to lots of skirts and dresses and other coat projects before, I did find that part of the instructions a little bit tricky. I did have to read the instructions quite a few times um, just to kind of take in what it was asking me to do. And I think it's because the, um, the actual pattern pieces, when they're cut out, you actually um, put the uh, pattern piece face down. So you've got the instructions face down rather than facing you, if that makes sense. So when I was trying to work out how you actually inserted the zip, the instructions weren't facing me, they were towards the table. So I found that a little bit confusing. Obviously you have got step-by-step -step instructions in the book, um, and as usual, the instructions are really, really good in the Tilly and the Buttons um, little booklet that you get with, with the pattern, um, whether you order the PDF version or the paper copy. I personally have the paper copy, um, but you know that's up to you what you decided to go for. Um, so the instructions did talk you through the whole process, and in the end I did work it out, but it did take me a little while to get there. Um, you have got this section that kind of flaps over the front um, of the zip, so I think that kind of confused me a little bit, because you've got the zip kind of on the inside, and that's sandwiched between two layers of fabric there. So um, I think I've just found that a little bit baffling. I guess just because it's a little bit different, and to be honest, I was trying to insert the zip after work, so I was probably just a little bit tired as well, so I guess you've got to take that into account. Um, one of the other areas that I found tricky about this project was actually um, not turning through the whole lining. Um, you actually leave um, a gap in the sleeve section to turn through the whole coat. Now, because mine was quite bulky, because like I say, I've got the, the wadding on the inside of my jacket here, 
um, and of course it's made of wool as well which is a fairly um, heavyweight fabric. Um, I did leave a wider um, gap in my sleeve than it actually tells you to in the pattern. That's absolutely fine because you just go back afterwards um, and, and sew up the, um, the hole that you've left there. So that's, you know, it's, it's not trouble. The main thing I found confusing about actually um, turning through the, the, the lining and, and stitching it all together so there's no gaps was actually the turning through of the sleeves. Now, I think this was completely my fault because I'd not read the instructions properly and I think to a certain extent you think oh I don't know what I'm doing now I've read the instructions and I was kind of well away however um, I would say if you are going to make this jacket please do read the instructions carefully for um, the actual finishing of the sleeves um, because it is a little bit tricky um, you do have to fold um, the inside sort of should I say the outside of the fabric back and then join um, your lining on the inside in a different way to what I'd actually experienced before. Um, but um, you know, I got there in the end, but you just have to make sure that you're not twisting anything. Um, so I would recommend trying on your coat on a regular basis when you're actually um, you know, turning through the whole thing, but actually turning through the sleeves particularly, just to make sure that it is all as you want it to be. Another slightly um, tricky area, and again, this was caused um, by me and trying to be clever or whatnot, um, was actually adding on the toggles. So, um, firstly, I ordered the toggles online. I think I got them on eBay or Amazon, but I can't quite remember. Um, but I thought that I'd actually ordered them in black. Um, and I could have swore that they were black until I actually took them out of the packaging um, when I realised they're actually navy blue. But actually, as it turned out, they do actually work quite well alongside the, um, the, the, the brown wool fabric anyway. So I was really pleased with that. And the nice thing about these toggles is they were the prim um, fastenings that I found. I think there are lots of other brands out there, but I decided to go for the prim version uh, because I'd actually seen them in a shop previously. They'd also got pre-punched holes in for you to actually sew through the leather as well, which is, of course, really helpful. Um, I sewed on my toggles by hand rather than um, using my machine to sew them on. Now, in the pattern instructions, it actually does say to sew on the toggles um, and make sure they're nice and taut across the body before you put in the, the, the full lining. Um, I, however, decided to um, leave my toggles until the last thing to do. Don't ask me why I did this. I thought it would be a good idea. However, I actually made it more difficult for myself um, because I uh, had to then sew through... Um, potentially all the different layers involved in the uh, in the wool and then the wadding and then the inside of the fabric lining as well. Didn't want to do that because I thought um, you know, it's going to leave a horrible kind of stitch mark on the inside of my jacket, which I just didn't really want, if I'm honest. Um, <laughs> you can probably just hear Bentley, my Labrador, drinking in the background there. And you can see him, he's just, hello, hello. Um, so um, what I decided to do instead was really, really carefully I have stitched these on by hand, but I've only gone through um, the outer layer of the fabric, so just the wool, rather than going through the wadding and through the cotton sateen on the inside as well. Um, that did take me absolutely ages, and I did have to be really, really careful that I was only catching that outer layer of fabric rather than um, the inner layer as well. Um, but I must say, it's well worth it, and the toggles do look absolutely super. Um, in order to keep the toggles in place, um, what I decided to do is, really simply, um, stick them on with some sellotape, um, just to try and keep them in place, as well as um, putting a few um, just regular pins through them as well. Um, my little pin dog that I've got here. Um, but um, yeah, so, hello. Um, so that um, worked really well for me, but obviously you can try your own methods. Um, but yeah, I can't believe that I've got my jacket finished. Um, I'm so pleased with it. It's, it's been a bit of a labour of love, really. It's taken me quite a few uh, weeks kind of on and off to do. I'm sure if you had a solid, you know, couple of days, you could definitely get it done over that time. Um, but I've been a little bit uh, short on time, so I've just been doing a little bit in the evening, a little bit at the weekend. Um, we've been pretty busy kind of doing different things and seeing family and seeing friends um, over the last few weeks. So I've not had loads and loads of time to spend on my project, unfortunately. Um, but I've managed to get it done, so I'm so pleased. Um, I wore it out for the first time yesterday, um, and yeah, I'm just so excited. I just felt like I wanted to tell everyone that I'd made my coat and um, that you know, it was a, a lovely pattern to work with and I definitely recommend it. But of course, not everyone's a sewer and not everybody wants to hear about uh, something that you've made. Um, but I must say, I did actually mention it to a couple of people when I was out shopping yesterday um, because 
just couldn't help myself really. I absolutely love it and I can't wait to start wearing it. And um, to be honest, I just want to make another coat now. So in my Make 9 this year, I have actually got the Dahlia coat from Sew Over on my list. So hopefully I, I might get around to doing that over the next couple of months um, when it's still kind of cold enough to wear it. So, um, but I think my next couple of projects are, are going to be kind of other kind of clothes rather than another coat project straight away. But I definitely want to get on uh, with another jacket as soon as I can. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learning more about um, how I made the Eden coat. Um, if you've got any questions about anything that I've said today, please do leave me a comment uh, below. And I'd love to hear about your experiences of making the Eden jacket or anything else that you've been working on at the moment. Um, I, I think what's one of the best things about Instagram and YouTube is kind of watching and hearing about what other people have been doing and making. So you can kind of share ideas and um, find out about or be inspired for other things that you can make in the future. Um, don't forget if you have enjoyed watching this video and um, please do hit the subscribe button um, to keep up to date with my latest content and of course hit the like button as well. Um, I really do appreciate you tuning in and watching my videos. Um, I really enjoy making them so hopefully you, you enjoy watching them as well. In my next video I'm going to be talking about a couple of other projects that I've been working on um, in between doing my Eden jacket so um, hopefully you'll tune in for that one. But until then I'll leave it there and I'll say see you later. Bye! Thank you.